personally have a wild background and an eclectic life. Before we do this, can we please take our shot? Let's do it. High performance energy comes from ketones. And you've taken something out of thin air and an idea out of your head based on science that you followed and you've created a product that's groundbreaking. This is great energy your body makes. Why can't you go buy it the same way you can buy a collagen or protein? How did you start? Find a secret that you know that no one else knows yet. You also have to put your blinders on because everyone's going to have an opinion. But I think you got to respect the game. You should be able to outbid them. Because it's your actual, like, skinny, if they search right. skinny confidential, you rank so much higher than them. Like, it's weird. Someone is sitting down on their computer and they're like, today I want to look for skinny confidential mouth tape. They're, they sat down to buy your product. You should be able to win yeah, that. Google doesn't like, like that them do, they do that anyway. So they'll rank your it, stuff easier. It's like if you sit down to buy Coca Cola and like Pepsi is the top at, like, shouldn't Coca Cola be able to win that customer more easily? Like, you should be willing to pay more than your competitor for that ad. Uh, just to give the audience context, I'm saying that when you search skinny confidential mouth tape on Google, yeah. mouth tape competitors are trying to steal my SEO. They're scared. Messed up. They're shaking it's, in their boots. Yeah, they're and skimming it. And we're just it. having a conversation that you guys are privy to. And I'm just asking both of the Michaels their opinions. Yeah. I used to work at Google, actually. Well, and there it is. I can't fix the problem for you, but we can postulate on what it might be. I love it. Let's pause for a second. When I first got connected and, and met Michael, we went over Zoom. This guy needs to come on the show because <laughs> we've been talking about HBMN and on the show for a bit. And we've been aware of it. Many of our friends use it, take it. My sister takes it religiously now. Like People love the product, which we're going to get into. But you personally have a wild background and an eclectic life. And I just thought having you on to tell your story and talk about everything you're doing would be interesting. So if you were going to give like a broad overview or a brief introduction to who you are, where would you even start at this point? Before we do this, can we please take our shot? Let's do we it. Shot. Okay. Yeah. So what are we doing? Tell us what, tell us what, how we're going to feel when we take this shot. We're having a shot of ketone IQ, okay. high performance energy. I created this with a large multi-million dollar contract with the Department of Defense Special Operations Command. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy. And this is not going to make me stay awake all night. It's not going to make you stay awake all night. It's energy where the energy is coming just from ketones, no sugar, no caffeine. Your brain loves ketones. We'll get into all of this. But the one sentence is, it's high performance energy comes from ketones. Cheers. Cheers. Some people, it tastes really crazy because it's fermented. It says appetite control. I love a little appetite control. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me. But I'm also one of those guys where if I know it's good for my body and I know I, like, oh, like I, my brain is telling me like I like it. You yeah. Yeah. I mean? What if fisting yeah. up your ass was good for your body? Would you <laughs> let me fist you up your ass? I don't know, Lauren. Let's, let's not go there. Okay. So <laughs> let's, let's get into it. So your background. Yes. Okay. I studied computer science at Stanford, got really into technology and then biohacking in particular. So a decade ago, I was early on wearing continuous glucose monitors, tracking my footsteps, seeing that basically all these sensors on and in the human body, that was a real trend that was taking off. Like a, a decade ago, no, not as many people were doing it. Now it's like 50 million people have wearables and devices. It was obvious to me that if everyone's objectively measuring their health, the things that we eat are going to change drastically. Like, I don't know what a goji berry does for your health. Like, it's, it, it doesn't register necessarily. Not to, I'm not trying to like poop on anyone's startup. There's a lot of like health and wellness trends that like don't measurably move anything. But when we're all wearing some sensor on or in our human body, our body's becoming this like platform and we can see our sleep score, our heart rate variability, our blood glucose. And in that world, like what actually moves the needle? Like what actually makes you perform better that you can actually observe and measure? So I came in with like as a big nerd, like a big computer science guy looking at the human body as a platform and like what should exist that doesn't exist that can move performance and health outcomes. And looked at a lot of stuff, looked at like hundreds of different ideas and came to ketones, got this large contract with the Department of Defense to develop a pure ketone drink. And have been building that for many, many years. Hold on, Michael. How yeah. does one get in touch with this department? Like, <laughs> you don't just email them cold. Right. It's it's the biggest, like, organization on planet Earth. It's like, you know, the US DOD is a trillion dollar a year budget. It's like the people talk about t selling into Fortune 500 companies. Like, if the DOD was a company, it'd be, like, number one. It's, it's huge. So you got to, like, you got to knock on a lot of doors. You got to network in a lot. You gotta fill out a lot of paperwork. You gotta, yeah. How long did it take you to get them? It took years. And yeah, it took it took years. So early on, we got investment from a group called Andreessen Horowitz. They're a large Silicon Valley investor. They really liked our thesis of doing like tech-based nutrition. And we were still early. This was like pre 
ketones, like we were still kind of incubating ideas. They have really good connectivity into the DOD. And then we just found other other ways. And you know, as an entrepreneur, it's like hard to explain. It's like you kind of manifest it and like you you just get it done. You find, you, like, you find how to do it. Yeah. You like you once you put your intentions to it, it's like you meet someone who knows someone and you this person, this other investor had knew someone else at their firm that it was an ex commander of SEAL Team Seven. It, like you just like meet people and when you really have a goal and you are extroverted founder type person, you just meet like it, it ends up kind of falling into place. I don't know if that's the best answer because like everyone's path is so special. It's like, how did you guys end up here? Like everyone would love to host their own like super popular podcast. Like, how'd you do it? It's like your path is pretty special to you. For us, it was just like we had this intent of like, hey, let's do really hardcore deep tech inside of nutrition. And it'd be cool to work with the DOD and kind of manifested it. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. As you were looking at all of this data and think in, in the early, early days before you decided to go down ketones and you were looking at everything else and quote unquote, like what actually moved the needle with the body? What, what were other things that you saw that you found interesting that maybe like that wasn't your path, but you're like, Hey, that is still interesting. Or, you know, maybe I should have looked at that harder or, or is there anything that yeah. sticks out? Sleep is really interesting. You know, there's a lot of different supplements around sleep with like magnesium and L-theanine and different types of mushrooms and different and not just and not just on like the nutritional side, but on the like sleeping at a cooler body temperature or sleeping in in certain times of the day. So I think sleep, like the whole area around sleep and like sleep is super impactful as well to your your performance. Sleep's super interesting. Sleep's an area where if I wasn't thinking about ketones and like metabolic health there, that I I think sleep is super interesting. So right? why did you land on ketones? Like what was the thing that tipped it for you? I'm a big marathon runner. I run six minute miles for the marathon Whoa. and I, I'm just really into endurance sports. And when you get good at running and like your, your body does these certain adaptations and you got to get really good at metabolism and your body gets really good at, among other things, your body gets really good at making and using ketones. So I kept seeing that coming up and I was thinking like, okay, if your body's making and using all these ketones and you're pushed to its limits, why can't you just go to the store and buy a buy a ketone? Like it's a it's this great energy your body makes. Why can't you go buy it the same way you can buy a collagen or protein or apple cider vinegar or anything else? If you were gonna explain ketones to a kindergartner, not that our listeners are kindergartners, but if you were say, I'm say, a kindergartner when it comes to, to ketones. Well, you put the glasses on. We're getting we're like I'm getting yeah. I'm getting serious. But if you were gonna just like before we dive into everything, just talk about ketones mm -hmm. to the audience, how would you start? It's a form of energy. Your body needs energy all the time. If you're running, you need energy. If you're lifting weights, you need energy. If you're thinking hard, you need energy. If you're sleeping, you're like recovering from the day's activities, you need energy. Your body's always using energy. That process of making energy is called metabolism. Maybe people remember that. Maybe more advanced than kindergarten, but maybe remember like high school biology. You're like your mitochondria is the power plant of your cell. So you're always turning the stuff that you're eating into cellular energy. And ketones are really good at that ketones are a really good source of energy for your cells. They're really efficient. They don't require as much oxygen. They feel really nice. Like when you're drinking ketones, like your brain especially likes ketones. So they feel really nice. So they're a form of fuel, the same way sugar is a fuel. Ketones are a fuel. They're a macronutrient. There's calories inside of it and it's a fuel and it just works really efficiently. How did you become this smart, man? Like, have you always been this smart or are you just a smart kid? Like what, what, what was your childhood like? Are you just naturally smart? The first thing I noticed about you is you're smart. Thanks, Lauren. I, I you got to ask my parents. I don't think I was the easiest kid growing up. Why? A good question. And it's something I've reflected on. I have a two year old daughter, and she's pretty high functioning too. Like she's very a very curious cat, and like I I see some similarities, or just like everything's super interesting to her. I think everything's just, just interesting. I, I was I got into a lot of trouble as a kid. I was like I was always standing up, and now now everyone's got like their standing desks, but I, I would just <laughs> always get yelled at to, for like standing too much, being asking too many questions. Like I remember like, I would like correct my teacher because they'd get like the math problem wrong and I'd be like, I'd like make fun of them and then I'd go to detention and like I was always, I've always just been a little bit, I was just curious. I don't think I'm like that much smarter than people. Maybe I'm more um, just like curious and I like, follow things through all the way. And I, yeah, I, I don't, I, it's not like I just like wake up in the morning, know all the answers to all the math problems. I just like, I, I think I just like spin a lot in my head. It's a hard question to answer. How do you, I don't know. I don't know if I'm smarter than No, I just think, everyone. I think it's I like, think it's so. not as, I mean, listen, there's, there's a ton of brilliant people, but there's, and to your point about follow through, but I, I think what's interesting about meeting people like yourself is, you know, you've also become an entrepreneur and you've taken something 
out of thin air and an idea out of your head based on science that you followed and you've created a product that's groundbreaking that so many people we know are taking and love. And I think like that is, that's what's interesting because it's like seeing it in action and creating something from nothing, right? That actually could drive a positive impact. I think like that is, that is less common than just being smart. Does it's make sense? also unique to cat. Like it's a unique category. It's super unique. And I think there's nothing quite like it. And my, one of my favorite books is this book called First and Thirst. It's the Gatorade book about how they created electrolytes in 1965 with the Florida Gators. And they had this whole insight that if you're sweating balls in the Florida swampy heat, that water alone doesn't hydrate you as well. Your sweat clearly contains things besides water. So what if you had electrolytes? And the whole story of how it took them decades, right? They were working on it since the 1960s. And it was like decades before they got like Michael Jordan and all the cool like 1990s Gatorade ads. Remember those ads where you're like, they're like sweating blue and red, like beads of Gatorade. Um, that was like three decades into their story. And this is that, that idea of taking something like this hard science insight and then building a really cool, like the coolest brand, at least in like the 90s, I was like the coolest brand, them and Nike. It was, it was like the coolest brand of the 90s. And that took a while. And I think it was cool that it came from like real science. I think, I think generally, maybe what makes us different is that like, it's, it's really like science at the core. Like I didn't come from like a marketing background or like a, a CPG background or anything like that. I came in as just kind of like curious nerd ball. And then I've like learned a lot about like we're now in Sun Life Organics, our friend Khalil's spot. We're in Sprouts. We're in every Equinox in America. Like I've learned all that stuff. Like the, the, where I came from was the more just like hard science world. Yeah. And well, I think that's the, the product speaks to that because it, you could tell this was something that wasn't like, this didn't just exist on a shelf or in a white label. Like you actually like created and invented something here to go deeper on ketones. How, you know, what happens as we progress through life and, and do we start producing less? Is there a reason? Do we start like, is there instances where we produce more? If it's, if you're talking about as an energy source, what are things people could do naturally to start boosting it more often? That's a great question. Yeah. A couple of things that make your body make its own ketones already. Like ketones, your body's made ketones for forever, for 300,000 years. Like humans make ketones. We always have made ketones. The, the, the things that make your body make ketones are cardio. So being active uh, and eating generally lower carb, like less sugar. What happens in either of those cases, whether you're doing cardio or whether you're like not eating a lot of sugar to begin with, is that your body will run low on blood sugar and it will start burning fat and turning into ketones. Because I know people want to put themselves into ketosis and me not being a scientist, like I, and I know there's a lot of prominent health professionals that talk about that being beneficial at times. Is that partly the intention for yeah. this when you, when you so, take it in what happens to the body when you do get into ketosis? So we're all in ketosis right now because we just had a shot 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. See, I don't understand that. So because I took this shot, my body is in ketosis now. Yeah. Meaning that you have elevated ketones in your blood. Got it. And, and that's the, the main intention is to get elevated ketones in your blood by taking this product. So you can basically instantly get into ketosis. You're instantly in ketosis. And now you have ketones flying around your bloodstream that your muscles can use, your brain cells can use, cells in your heart can use, like your body can use those ketones for fuel for all the things going on. And your brain especially likes ketones. When I was like, I want to say I was like 25, I did Lindora, which is like a weight loss program. Okay. And you had to take like a P test or something to check that you were in ketosis. They yeah. wanted you in ketosis to lose weight. Yeah. When you say I'm in ketosis from this shot, does that have to do with weight? It kind of does because it's replicating a lot of the things that you're doing when you're doing a keto diet or doing a lot of cardio. It's interesting because you don't have to do, I'm not doing the keto diet right now, but I'm in ketosis because I just drank ketone IQ and it replicates a lot of the effects of a keto diet. So for instance, it helps to control appetite. Like when you have ketones in your system, your body's not as hungry. There's this really interesting study done where they had people have drink the same amount of calories from ketones and from sugar and like hundred calories of both. And the the group that had ketones was significantly less hungry. And when they did blood tests for ghrelin, the hunger hormone, the ketone group also had a lot lower just objective scores of ghrelin. So ketone IQ is this way to like get into ketosis and it replicates some of the things that people like about the keto diet. But the keto diet's a pain in the butt, like for a lot of people. I don't know, carbs are are good too. Like I'm not, I don't, I think it's good to avoid too much excess sugar, but I also don't recommend for everyone to like go do a hardcore keto diet. I don't think that's great either. 
what's interesting about ketone IQ is you can get some of these benefits without doing the full-blown keto diet. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Sure. What are your thoughts on the semi-glutide that's happening? Because I feel like you are someone that would know about everything that's going on because of the business that you're in. It's interesting for sure. It's just definitely like more hardcore. I think if what we're doing is a hammer, that's like a sledgehammer, the the ozembic semi-glutide, just the general like hard pharmaceutical stuff. I think it's interesting for some people, but it's definitely more like hardcore. Yeah. Um, there's definitely like more, more side effects and things to consider with it. Yeah. It sounds like with this, if you wanted to, like, this is a good way if you wanted to start managing your energy levels a little bit more and you wanted to potentially suppress your, I don't want to say suppress, but manage your appetite and your hunger a bit. This is maybe like an initial step you would take besides you just before deciding to take the sledgehammer approach. Yeah. Yeah. It just helps you control your appetite, feel nice energy, especially mentally. And yeah, you're not that hungry. It's cool. How do you integrate this into your day? I'm a big runner. So when I'm running, I have ketones on top of the, like I'll have like a banana and ketones in the morning. And I just like a really nice form of fuel. Ketones are interesting because they go through this different pathway than carbohydrates. They're just a different form of fuel. So a lot of athletes like it because they'll have it on top of their normal stuff so that they have more metabolic substrates going through more different channels in their body. How many can you take a day? On our package, we say limit at three and a half. Walk me through an ideal day. Is it three in the morning or is it three throughout the day? I have one in the morning. It's a, it's a nice way to just like wake up and feel energetic. I just feel like clicked on. A lot of people like rep have replaced their coffee with it or they'll have it on top of their coffee. Um, it's just like a morning stack. You, you know, like bulletproof coffee or like MCT sure. coffee. A lot of people are familiar with that. The whole idea of MCT is it's a medium chain triglyceride. It's a form of fat that turns into ketones. That's the whole reason people are interested in MCTs is that ah. it, it's a type of fat that because of the chain length of the, the triglyceride, it turns into ketones relatively easily. We've just skipped a step. So this is just like a straight ketone. So a lot of people have ketone IQ with their coffee or they'll have it instead of their coffee and just feel this energy rush in the beginning of the day. And then they'll have it like, yeah, once or twice else throughout the day to kind of re-up Are you before a podcast or something. Can you <laughs> fast and take this too? Is it going to break you out of your fast? That's something people love doing because it extends your fast. You're not having any sugar. You're not spiking your blood glucose. You're not spiking your blood insulin. So it's fasting compliant in those ways. It makes it really easy to carry over your intermittent fast until noon or whatever that you're trying to do. What are some mistakes that you see because you know so much about uh, about ketosis that people make when it comes to ketosis? Because everybody says like keto season when they're like, maybe like it's like summer's coming up or spring break. Like if you were going to follow that diet, like what what are some of the things that you've learned? Yeah, it's it, it works really well. I've seen for people who do it in like a sprint, they do like 60 days to get beach bod ready or to like fit in the wedding dress or like, I think it works well for those. Like if, if you got to shed some weight, like do the keto diet. I think people have a harder time doing it long-term. Some people truly love it. They, they just truly feel good or their body just does not deal well with carbs. And they just are, they've been, you know, keto since 2017. Like th those people definitely exist. I think for most people, keto diet is more of this like tool to use on a, on a temporary basis to like hit some weight loss goal. And then and then when you return to normal diet, what I would say is what works really well for people is like incorporate maybe some of the learnings where, again, if once you go back to normal diet, you're incorporating carbs and stuff. But like, I think on the keto diet, one thing that everyone should try it, I think once, I, again, I'm not doing it hardcore. Like I, I'm not, I'm not a big keto diet fan, but I think it's worth trying because you start learning there's sugar in everything. There's sugar in your salad dressing, there's sugar in your ketchup, there's sugar everywhere. And then when you, if you try that out, then you, when you return to a normal diet, like carry over some of those like, oh yeah, when I have tacos, like, the, I don't know, the the taco itself. It's almost like has an awareness lot, of what all yeah. the ingredients are that you're normally eating. Yeah, exactly. That like there's more sugar in things than maybe you thought that like pasta is actually like, yeah, that your body just turns that pasta into sugar right away. And like there's different forms of carbohydrates, like certain carbohydrates are more fibrous. Like a potato is not the same as a bag of candy, even if it has the same amount of carbs because the potato has starches and fibers in it that basically slow down the release of sugar into your bloodstream. So like they're, not all carbs are the same. You, I think you learn a lot when you try like a keto or lower carb diet that you can like reincorporate back when you do a normal diet later on. If yeah. you do a pee test after drinking this, so you're saying you will be in ketosis. Oh, definitely. 
I often carry around. I should. I don't. I might have it even in my backpack. Is like a, I like a blood test. You can do like a blood fingerprint. I, I have like calluses on my whole finger, like a guitar player. Except I'm not a guitar player. I'm just a big nerd, and I do like blood testing. Because we've done like so many different variations on our product and tests over the years, and with all the running I do, I'm always like testing my blood ketone levels and blood glucose levels. And you can the best way to do it is like the finger blood stick. The next best way is you can do a P test or there's breath tests. The best is blood, but what you gotta actually wait. Doesn't ketosis make your breath smell? Does this make your breath smell? Let's talk about Armra Colossum. Lauren and I have been absolutely obsessed with Armra Colossum ever since we interviewed the founder on this show. Check out that episode. If you just search Armra, the Skinny Confidential, it will pop up. We dive into all of the benefits on Armra Colossum. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the effects of Armra Colossum, if you want to increase your immune system, your gut health, improve your fitness and metabolism, enhance your skin, your hair radiance, and also seal all the barriers of your body, not just your gut, you're going to want to try Armra Colossum. Lauren and I take this every single morning. We give it to our kids. Sometimes we put it in a drink and stir it around. Sometimes we actually just dump a scoop into our mouth. It has this kind of like creamy milk dud taste. To educate you a little bit more on colostrum for those that are unfamiliar, colostrum is the first nutrition we receive in life and contains all of the essential nutrients our bodies need in order to thrive. Armra is a propriety concentrate of bovine colostrum that harnesses over 400 living bioactive nutrients that rebuild the barriers of your body and fuel cellular health for a host of research-backed health benefits. It's also sustainably sourced colostrum from grass-fed cows at their co-op of dairy farms in the United States. And unlike most colostrum, which use heat pasteurized that depletes nutrient potency, Armra leverages their proprietary cold chain biopotent technology in an innovative process that purifies and preserves the integrity of hundreds of bioactive nutrients. And of course, we've worked out a special offer for our audience. Receive 15% off your first order. Go to tryarmra.com slash skinny or enter skinny to get 15% off your first order. That's T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A dot com slash skinny. Who doesn't want to have glowy super gel on their skin? If you want that ultimate effortless, no makeup, makeup glowing product, here it is. I'm presenting it to you on a silver platter. Say, Say is an award-winning, clean, and planet-positive makeup brand that is sold exclusively at Sephora. Big Sephora fan, big Say fan. They have several award-winning, best-selling products, but specifically, they have these two that I got to tell you about. The Slip Tint SPF 35 Tinted Moisturizer, so good under makeup. And then you pair it with their glowy super gel and you cannot go wrong. This is going to give you that like glass skin, really pretty highlighted, sort of like an illumination hydration situation on your face. If you're going to grab something else at Sephora, I would highly recommend their dew blush. I wore it the other day when I got dressed up and put it like on the apples of my cheeks. And it just gives you like kind of like a little sun-kissed glow. Those are probably the three products that I would start with if you want that really pretty like glowy skin. You should also know that Say refers to themselves as clean complexion experts because each makeup product is totally purposely crafted with sustainability in mind and it's packed with good for you ingredients. The best part of this brand is that they left out over 2,000 ingredients that they thought were potentially harmful to the skin. Say is available at Sephora. Shop now at Sephora. Supplementation, microneedling my scalp. I also switched from blonde to brunette. I am eating so much meat with aminos and I'm also doing scalp massage. But I have taken my scalp massage over the last eight months up to a different level. And I am using the Grow Hair Serum by Vegamore to really kick it up a notch. I love this specific hair serum because it really has helped me get visibly fuller, thicker, and healthier hair. And I'm telling you, I notice a difference. The best part too is their products are 100% cruelty-free and never formulated with harmful ingredients like parabens or hormones. So what I do is I take a scalp massager. Sometimes I use my fingers I prefer a scalp massager and I really get in there with the serum. I put some droplets in my hands and then I'll just really put it all on the scalp and really massage while pulling the scalp up. So I'm stretching the fascia and just getting that blood circulation going in the scalp really helps with hair growth. I signed up for a monthly subscription So I get one bottle sent to me every single month. It's cute. It's pink. They sell one bottle every 15 seconds. So that should tell you how good it is. Elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. 
For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash skinny and use code skinny at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash skinny, code skinny to save 20% off your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash skinny, code skinny. Not really. Like I, the ketosis, when you're like deep in ketosis, yeah, people will have like acetone breath because like your your body's like, yeah, some people will get keto, like keto breath from being deep in ketosis. But, but you're know, okay pe- on this? Yeah, people don't really get like bad breath from it. I think like... Why don't you launch a keto breath mint? Yeah. That you can have after you have your keto shot. That would like help you to... Get the Department to, of Defense to, to fund it. To fund the breath mints? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You have built um, a, a multi-million dollar brand. How... I want to talk about the entrepreneur side. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. First of all, tell us how you sort of had the intuition to get into this and how you've maneuvered throughout this whole entire journey. Because as we know, it's not easy. How did you start? What's it been like? What's your day to day like? That's, these are great questions. I love the entrepreneur journey. It started off as curiosity is very much a science fair project, me and my co-founder and just trying things out, very small team, uh, very science driven. And it's been really important to get partners, like great, great partners help, like, especially because wh- where we come from is like more of a technical world is like, it's really important for us to work with people that can help get the word out. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, you, you have to have some home field advantage. Some entrepreneurs have like awesome platforms and maybe they need like a technical co-founder to help like build something interesting. Or some people are like really technical. They have, they've invented a flying shoe, but they have like 12 followers on Instagram that got known to to tell about it. Usually, I would say like usually entrepreneurs fall into one of those camps where they're like either really good and like extroverted, have a lot of like people, friends and 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 platform, or they're like just technical wonk and can do incredible stuff, but like maybe haven't figured out how to get it out there. I think the best companies have both. The best companies truly become both. You become like Apple where it's like technical and sexy. We definitely start out more technical for sure. And then have like figured out yeah, we've gotten some cool people like Joe Montana's investor, Jake Paul is an investor. I'm here with you guys. Like we're like we get like just cool different partners. Um, and the work's never never finished. Like once you're in Sprouts, it's like oh let's get into Whole Foods. Once you're in Whole Foods, it's like oh let's get into Costco and Target. Once you oh, cool, you like can we get Taylor Swift drinking it? Like you're always like trying to like figure out the next level of the game. Does that help answer your question? I thought it was a good question. Totally. What's been your coolest moment? Ooh, um, I was on Shark Tank. Yeah, tell us all about that. Wait, invest? first you have to no. tell us, because there's people <laughs> who are listening that, that want to get on Shark Tank. Yeah. Tell us it, like the whole process of how you got on. Then you have to tell us the during and then the aftermath. We've yeah. had Barbara on the show and we've had a few people on the show that have been on Shark Tank. Some had deals that didn't happen after. Some actually did get funded out. Yeah, I would love to hear the... Shark Tank is super interesting. So yeah, I'll just say up front, like we ended up not getting a deal, but I would still like do it again in a heartbeat because it's just cool. It's like free sets and reps for telling your story. It's really important to do as a founder, just get out Probably there and tell it. themselves now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've, ra- it. we've raised it a higher valuation than what we were pitching the sharks from like you know, other, you know, big legit investors. So like, it's all, it's all love though. It's like, I think we learned a lot it's a free ad for your product in prime time. Cause even if you, the sharks don't invest, you'll still like people will still like text me, tag me all the time. Like I, they see it on a rerun on the back of their like Delta airlines, like, uh, like uh flight, you know, the, the TV there, they'll like, see. I'd like to pitch the sharks and them not invest. You're right. It's a free commercial. How, why did you decide to do it? Like, tell me about the application situation. I, we got a little lucky where they reached out to us and we're like, Hey, you guys are interesting. Well, like, I don't know. You can't hard to replicate. I think I, we were making a lot of noise at the time. Like we were just very like biohackers from Silicon Valley talking a lot about intermittent fasting. And it was fun because I'd worked at Google, which at the time was like very famous for like free food, delicious chefs like what like and i left google and was like running this biohacking company and i had this large community of intermittent fasting and out of silicon valley and it was just like a funny story in the press of like oh this ex googler is now like starving his employees i wasn't starving anyone but it, like it made a very, it made a good like headline so i think we were just making good good amount of noise and then shark tank is like oh what do you guys actually do like do you want to come pitch it on our on our show so i think i think that's one thing i've learned is just like yeah how do i you got to like be kind of and as an entrepreneur you got to be an idea virus you got to figure out how to be a meme you got to figure out how to get like into the consciousness like you have to because like pepsi or whatever has a way bigger budget like the attention economy is nuts these days it's really hard to stand out you have to do something that's like a little bit 
weird and noteworthy. And so I think if we start doing that stuff and then Shark Tank can't win. And then it kind of like replicates because now it's like, oh yeah, like once you're on Shark Tank, then the next person wants to talk to you. The next one is, I don't know. It's kind of a video Why game. did they not invest? What was the... Was the you'd have to ask them? I think what what they would say is that I think we came across a little technical at the time, yeah. Uh And I think they were like, "You guys need to." Well, yeah, because like even the reason I wanted to have you on the show is there is a real, to your point, technical element to this and how it was created. But I think, you know, what we try to be is filter sometimes to at least to our audience in in kind of in a way, and I I hate to use something, but like dumb things down to make it so this is understandable. And for me, the way I'm hearing this is like if I want to have manageable natural energy levels and not maybe have to go to other substances, you can do this. If you want to potentially manage appetite and not jump to the sledgehammers or say you could use this. Um, if you wanted to have maybe more productive workouts or productive podcasts and have your brain off, like this is, it's just a quick way to do it and it doesn't disrupt your sleep and it's a natural way with no sugar and no chemicals, right? Did I just nail it? Yeah, that's really well said. Yeah, yeah. you should pitch the shark. Yeah, Sounds yeah, yeah. great. But, but, but I think like, you know, um, we're always looking for st- stuff like this, innovative stuff, because um, to your point, there's like there's so much there's so much information out there, even when it comes to diet, which I think we could talk about in a second. Like people are just confused on what to do, what not to do, what works, what doesn't work, you know. But this yeah. is what I've realized. I just got off the phone with with my PR and I was talking about mouth tape. I launched mouth tape, skinny confidential mouth tape. And they were like, well, people don't really know what to do with this. Like they don't like the the editors are like confused about it. And to me, that means you're on to something because it's the most disruptive things that actually make the noise in the end. I know that mouth taping is going to be like a toothbrush in three years. I think people will be taping their mouth shut like they scrape their tongue and they use a toothbrush. And there's kind of something that gets you off or gets me off. And I'm wondering if you feel the same, that your product, it's it's hard to take in at first because it's new and people are like, it's uh, there's uncertainty around it and there it needs explanation because it is disruptive. Yeah. And it, it's so much truth to what you're saying, Lauren. It's that the mouth tape that you're, that you're doing, it's remarkable, right? It's, it's hard to look away from. It's different. It's weird. Those are all really good things. And like, there's this, you want to like polarize people. Like, the, I think the, the enemy as a entrepreneur is to be like very good. Like that's the worst spot to be where you're like, you know, seven and a half out of 10. It's like a, a decent, but like you want to be like, this is amazing. Or like, what the hell? Why is this lady sending me mouth tape? Like, you, the best ideas start out like that. Like I don't liquid death is like a crazy name to call a water company. Like uh, the first iPhone, you go back. It's, it's so funny. You go back and like look at the early reviews of the iPhone. Everyone's like, this is so stupid. This is only for like tech millionaires. It's like, it was like $1,200. Didn't have any apps. It was stupid. What does Apple know about phones? No, thank you. I'm going to stick with my Blackberry. Like er, the new ideas always sound completely insane. I think that's, a, that's such a good insight and like how it should really feel. Like if your idea makes too much sense on day one, like generally ideas get watered down over time as you build out your business. Like if it doesn't start out with like 11 out of 10 spicy, weird, remarkable, there's that book, Purple Cow with the guy Seth Godin, if people have heard of that one. It's like, you you see cows all the time. If you saw a purple cow, you would remember it for the rest of your life. Like you want to be that. That's a great book, by the way. You want to be that purple cow. And if you're not on day one, you're only going to get more like normie over time. So you got to start out weird. Yeah, I'll it's, give you- it's so true though. Your Your product is a purple cow. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I'll give you like, it, even thanks. like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing something different than, than both of you in a lot of ways, where it's like, I'm running a media company and a lot of, without getting so detailed, a lot of the way we started this business, like a lot of the pushback I would get either from publications or media, um, like agencies or brand or advertisers is like, they would be very flustered about the way we conduct some of the business here at Jimmy or the way we do things or some of our processes. And they're like, well, it's always been done this way. You have to conform this way. And I was like, have you looked at all the media companies and legacy media companies that have just like crumbled and burned and fallen apart? It's like, if if they told me, hey, good for you, you're doing everything like everyone else, I'd be like, this is a cause for concern. Like we we might have to shut this thing down. And the whole the whole thing is like, and I think this is good for any entrepreneur. When you start something and you get that pushback and people tell you, well, this is not how things have been done or you're not doing it like everybody else, that should be taken as words of encouragement, not as words of um, despair. Because 
like if, if if you're just coming in and doing it like everybody else, you're probably just a second rate version of what already exists. And some of those things that exist could be going away. If you're getting that pushback, it's likely because you're breaking the status quo and onto something new. Yeah. And Michael, you always say when 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 a show pitches themselves to Dear Media and they'll be like, I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan. And Michael immediately is like, no, like, don't whenever, be whenever, use use your own formula. You're not going to be what, like, don't be the next anyone. Just, yeah, whenever yeah. I hear someone say they're going to be the next any, like if somebody came and said, I'm going to be the next ketone IQ, I'm going to be the next HVMN. I would say like, why? Like, it's already, the already is the one, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like I kind of just tune out. I, I had this uh, amazing literary agent tell me today that when he decides to take on a book that he wants people to either absolutely fucking love it or absolutely fucking hate it. He doesn't want it. indifference. Yeah. He wants an extreme reaction. And, and to your point, he doesn't just want good. He doesn't want a seven. Your product is, is reminds me of that. And it's like th that mouth tape conversation I just had, like reminds me of this. It's like, people don't get it, but I kind of like love, they don't get it. Yeah. How do you respond to that with your product? That you want to be memorable. You want to be remarkable. You want to be something that's not remembered. It's like, when you think about great art, like half the people think it's ugly, stupid, like this shouldn't be up in a museum, but like all this stuff that's like very good. Yeah. That's what's like hanging up at the hallway and at the Hyatt, like that's, you know, nice art. That's, but like the really good stuff that like changes the world. It's like, yo, that can of soup is stupid. That's not art. I could do that. But then like, it's that the really provocative, remarkable stuff that like flips it on its head that like no one's really done before. So I, I think you got to, as an entrepreneur, you got to be tough on it because I think four out of five people, especially in the early days, like the reporters or the investors or the early people that you're pitching your product to, they're not going to get it. So you really have to find your tribe of people. And you have to, if you're going to buy the ticket of being weird and out there, then you got to take the ride of the fact that like a lot of people aren't going to get it at first. Like if you're out there selling your iPhone on day one, like most people are going to be like, that's stupid. No, thank you. I'll, I'll stick with my BlackBerry. And you just got to have, I mean, you, we all know, like you got to have that thick skin to that. And then over time, it's just interesting. Like I've been we talking about ketones ketone iq for a while and like more and more people are like oh wow like people that like two years ago were like oh that was like doesn't make sense now they're like oh cool yeah that's really interesting my trainer told me about that like you see it like kind of trickling in and you just got to be good vibes about it like i truly like if it wasn't the right thing for someone two years ago if they wanted to stick with their blackberry like it's all love like i'm not like judgmental like i'm a late adopter on a lot of stuff too i'm early adopter on the stuff that i we are all early adopters on the things that we like really care about if that's like health or fitness or beauty or fashion but on a lot of things, like I'm not trying to be the early adopter on like stuff I don't I don't really know. But I want to go to the the restaurant that like people have already said is cool. Like I, I'm not trying to like go to every restaurant in town. I go to out to dinner like once a week with my wife. Like I want to go to the spot that's already like known good. So like we're all early or later adopters. So there's no judgment on on people being late adopters. But um, within your area, you want to be like really targeting the early adopters. I think sure. people are afraid of uncertainty and anything that they feel scared of. And so maybe the word ketone feels, it feels scary because they don't understand it. But I think you're right. Once you have more context around it and more understanding, it makes it easier to adapt to. And it's our job to make it, you know, more and more normal. It's just like layers of paint over time. Like what's, what's new to people now? Like one of our recent investors is Kurt from Vital Proteins and nutritional collagen wasn't the thing. Like collagen was something you put on your skin, right? It was like a topical cream and the idea that you would like eat it for stronger hair, skin and nails. Like in 2010, that wasn't really a thing. And that had to really be explained. Like, why am I doing that? What is that? And I think the best businesses fundamentally, they have that, they have that like weird factor of like, no one's done this. It seems it's going to seem weird to a lot of people, but like, hang on with me. And then when you keep on doing it for like years, decades, then like, if what you're doing has like core truth to it, then I think you can just be patient as an entrepreneur. The early adopters become like the slightly less early adopters, become the normal people, become the late adopters. And like, you just got to be patient with it. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to put your pink mouth tape on and a sip. Well, in reverse order. You got to like- Your ketones yeah, yeah. through the slit. <laughs> okay. But you know, like the, the way I describe sometimes, and this may sound arrogant, even some of the things we're involved with is I will tell people, whether it's an investor or a partner or a retailer, or whatever it is, that these things are inevitable. And what I mean by that is whether like reporters or a market or an investor likes it or not, like it is happening to your point. Like I think a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes get discouraged because it doesn't happen right away. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, wait, the market's turning it down within my first year or first years. 
the thing you like, I believe these things are inevitable, but that also is tapered with like, it may be inevitable, but it might take 20 or 30 years. I think we're just, we're so impatient and we're so quick to abandon something out when we get a few no's right away. And so people don't stick with it. And to your point, like you've been working on this a long time. Um, you know, even when people talk about this podcast, like, oh, I love when you had so and so. I'm like, that was episode 700 or whatever, 600. And like, you know, same for you. It's like you're like now people are talking about this. Now people are really liking it. Now it's in every Equinox. Now it's in every you know Whole Foods, wherever it is. Um, but like it didn't it didn't just happen. You know, yeah. I mean, you're patient. It's such a good point. There, some of the best advice I've gotten is you want to find the secret that you know that no one else knows yet. You need to have that duality, and it's hard, I think, for a lot of people to exist in that duality of like something you know to be true that like your approach to media is inevitable. It's like such a good word for it. Like this is inevitable. And even when in the early days, it's like, you got to like ask your mom to please subscribe on YouTube and like leave a comment, right? Like in the early days, like you're, you're fighting tooth and nail for everything. We used to have to create social assets to show people where the podcast app was on their phone. Yep. Yep. Right. It's like, here you go. Like, and, and that idea that like, how can it be inevitable? Like this is clearly going to be huge guys. And at the same time, you're like explaining to people how to get the app on their phone. Like, how can those both be true? Like there's like a duality to it that you have to be able to occupy as a founder is like, if you have a vision that like, this is inevitable, this is a fundamental truth, but we're not there yet. I think a lot of people get discouraged or like they, I mean, I don't know. I think you can, you just got to be able to listen to your own voice and like have some conviction on stuff. I think if you're, if the first, if you think it's a great idea, but then like the first five people you tell about it are like, oh, that's a bad idea. And then you like, what are you going to like wag your tail and go home? And like, that's no, that's no way to build yeah. anything cool in the world. I think the duality is extreme patience mixed with extreme persistence. You have to like balance those. And yeah. then you also have to put your blinders on because everyone's going to have an opinion. Yeah. I have another question for you that is in relation to this that I think many people. So you mentioned you were working at Google. Hmm. I'm assuming if that's a very like big company, stable environment, cushy work environment with massive buffet or whatever it is. Don't tell my team members here that we don't, we don't, don't get any ideas, Carson. Uh, and, you know, taking the leap from having that job stability and having a, a, an outlined potential growth path and all these things. You know, what are some of the biggest takeaways you took from working in a massive organization like that to entrepreneurship? And what was the thought process leaving something like that to go into this world of uncertainty? You know, I'm really glad I did it. I'm really glad I had time. I worked at YouTube actually, and it was, it was cool to see like the inside of like the algorithm. Like why do you, how do videos get recommended? Like what's the actual kind of machine behind all of that. I thought that was really cool. And just the ability to know how a big company works. Because when you start your startup, you're not going to have a product marketing team and a bunch of engineers and a PR team and an HR person and a legal team. Like you're not going to have all of those parts. As a founder, maybe if you have a co-founder, a couple early people, like you're just doing everything. You are mm -hmm. customer success. You're the one emailing the reporters to get press coverage. You're the one handing out samples. Like you're doing all of that stuff. I mean, even still to this day, like I did, we just got a giant inflatable ketone IQ, like life-size suit that arrived at my house. I'm like dancing. I'm going to LA marathon, <laughs> handed out to people. So like, you're always doing all these things. And I think it, it was, it was important for me to work at YouTube, which is just, you know, best in class business and see how all the functions work so that I know, okay, well, even at a company of like two or four or 10 or 20, like what all needs to happen. Um, so I think big company experience is super important, helpful, uh, for any kind of entrepreneur. And then I would say the biggest thing I always say, say to everyone trying to make the jump is like build a platform because you can do that without quitting your day job. Or you can like build a following on pick your favorite platform, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. You can build a following while keeping your day job. If you like talking about, if you're a, you want to be a, if you want to get in to parenting stuff, you can share like mommy recipes while keeping your day job. If you want to get into health and nutrition, you can share fitness tips while keeping your day job. Like you can get a hundred thousand followers while keeping your day job. We so started when, this podcast when we both had separate jobs and separate careers. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. And we started Dear Media when we had separate companies. So like we, we've never jumped into anything without having a little bit of stability. I think like that's worth being said because to your point, you can moonlight and create on all of these platforms on your time, you know, when you're not working at your day job. Yep. Yep. And then, and there's certain things that like, I think do demand full commitment that you really do need to take the jump. So it's, I think helpful to think about like, if you're trying to take the jump in like a year or two years or whatever, like what can you start doing now? Like making a 
a platform getting a following probably pretty good i think when it comes to like physical production or really like deep design or definitely if you're going to like manage other people and those people are working full-time i think you kind of you start going full-time but i think i think as well said michael like that you want to find the um the aspects that you can do while you keep while you still have your day job and like get the get the momentum going yeah. what are the secrets of youtube how do you get your videos shown? So tell us all the juicy secrets. They're always updating it. And, you know, even they're opaque about it. As galaxy brain as you want to go on it, it comes back to like making really good content, like making stuff that people like and comment on and share. Shares are really big right now. Like, because people are more and more engaging with platforms in the DMs rather than like publicly liking things or publicly commenting. So it's really important to get like bookmarks and shares. And this is changing all the time. Like two years ago, it'd be different advice because people were more public about their actions and it was less important to get the the shares and the, and the bookmarks. It used to be more just straight likes and straight comments, but good content is the key. And then there's, you can kind of optimize for little tweaks. But I, it's, I think it's helpful to think through like what, when whatever I'm making content is like, I mean, you guys are way better at content. What I've learned in my less expertise than you guys is that you like think through like, why would someone bookmark this? Why would someone share this with a friend? Like, is this just like pumping my own shit, making me look cool? Or is this like actually delivering value to where like someone would share it to a friend for a laugh or they were going to bookmark it for, I do a lot of running content. Is someone going to bookmark this for when they're training for a marathon? Like, is it actually meaningful or is this just like, like me pumping my own, oh, I look cool today. You know what I've realized too, Michael, and I have realized this, I want to look smart. Right. So I what I notice when I share content, I want to look like the person who like has the information, even though it's not my information. Let mm -hmm. me give you an example. I'll send my dad, Dr. James on Instagram, which is like lift weights, get your sunlight, eat your, ma eat your magnesium and I'll send it to him. And as I, it's sending, I'll feel like I'm adding value to my dad's life, which makes me feel self-important. So what I've realized is like when people are sharing content, there's an aspect of feeling self-important while they're sending it to someone or like I'll send Michael something about how it's like bad to be on your phone in the morning. While and, she's sending it from her phone in the morning. And, <laughs> and but I'll feel there's like some kind of like um, dopamine hit that I get. That's like oh. I'm the one that's like being the educator or what, the facilitator is the right word of the content. Does that make sense? What yes. I believe it is, is people want to feel like they take part ownership over things, which is yes. not a bad quality. It's like, I will send a funny WWE wrestling meme from, it says like some 90s account of like what you were doing in the 90s. And I will, that is my way of like passing my sense of humor yes. to, to my friend, even though it's not my content. Or maybe you and I are talking and somebody sees like, hey, this was a really smart point that I think could help my friend. And it's in a way them taking ownership of this piece of content to help their friend. Does that make sense? So that's totally. how I and look then, through it through a lens now. And then how do you reverse engineer that when, as content creators? How do you tap into that? Quick break to talk about Nerd Wallet, And I use them all the time as a resource when it comes to making financial decisions. One of the most financial decisions you can make is which credit card you actually want to use. There are so many different options out there with so many different rewards and benefits. They all have different perks and rewards and benefits that they offer. So having a platform like Nerd Wallet to kind of lay it all out on the table and figure out what's right for you is incredible. It's a great resource. And here's why. Nerd Wallet lets you compare top travel credit cards side by side to maximize your spending, some even offering 10x points on your spending. So think about what future you could do with better rewards, a free flight, room upgrades, cash back, more points. NerdWallet lets you compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more. NerdWallet has all of this information laid out in one place. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. Reminder, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. The bloat capsule by Array, I've been talking about it for, gosh, three years. I am obsessed with this. It's a blend of five herbs and one fruit-based digestive enzyme. I was actually like told I have to be taking a digestive enzyme with every meal from my doctor. And this is the one that I constantly go back to. I bring it when I travel. It just targets bloat and helps you feel so much relief. And it's good for your gut. My doctor was telling me all the benefits of having that digestive enzyme throughout the day when you're eating. It's really, really amazing for even the lining of the gut. I tend to really reach for Array, though, if I'm traveling and I'm having like pizza or a burger or fries. It just keeps things moving, if you know what I mean. 
Their product is all natural, like it's 100% natural, which I think is awesome. It's laxative free, vegan, non GMO, gluten free, filler free, nut free, cruelty free, and non habit forming. I love the ingredients too. They have like bromelain for speeding food breakdown. They have ginger root, lemon balm. They even have dandelion root for liver health. They have peppermint. And the best is they have slippery elm, which again, gets things moving, which we're loving. I have a code for you. Go to array.com and use code skinny at checkout. You receive 15% off your first purchase or auto ship order. That's array.com. Use code skinny at checkout. You receive 15% off your first purchase or auto ship order. I take my sun protection very seriously. I do my research when it comes to all sun protection, and Sunbum just launched a new daily collection. It features ultra lightweight moisturizing formulas with built in SPF, so it's easy to stay protected from the sun every day. Sunbum's new sunscreen thinks it's a moisturizer, and that's a good thing. So they have three products. I really like the daily gel, this one is truly invisible. So how I use this is a makeup primer. I'll actually prime my skin before I put on makeup, which is amazing because I know I'm getting that 24-hour hydration with SPF 50, and it's sheer and invisible. Really, like it's actually sheer, which is awesome. They also have a daily face, and this is more like your one-and-done moisturizer. This is awesome if you are on a time crunch or you're a busy mom and you just need to get something on your face. And then, and I'm really passionate about this, they have daily body. So this feels like your favorite body lotion, but with SPF, you can put it on in the morning and forget about it. To have a body sunscreen that you go to, I think is really important because so many of us are so focused on our face that we forget the body. So you always want to have one like on your vanity ready to go. You can visit sunbum.com and use code skinny15 at checkout. You get 15% off your first purchase. That's S-U-N-B-U-M dot com code skinny15 for 15% off your first order. Sunmum dot com code skinny15. I think it comes back to creating things that are of a not so self-serving and are of value to the like even when we think about this show, like there is a lot of self-service and we get to meet interesting people and have the conversations we want. But our thought is always like, could one of these conversations go and impact someone's life in a positive way, whether they're laughing or they're taking something that changes their business. Or in this instance, maybe they're looking to take that entrepreneurial step or they're looking to have a more managed um, appetite or they want to have a better time in the gym. Like there's things, there's elements here where I believe if people are listening, they can take and like have a positive change, which is why like on this show, we never really get into kind of like stuff that I think detracts, which is maybe like gossip or stuff that's harmful. Does that make sense? Totally. Like we take on heavy subjects, but I like, I always am trying to think about it and we're trying to think about it from the lens of like, if somebody turns this on in three or four years, could it still have a great or good impact on them or somebody they share it with? It reminds me, honestly, a lot of like fashion. Like when, if you're making Ralph Lauren for people or coach or whatever, for people that like, you're giving them a way to express their identity. Like they're they're picking Nike today or they're picking... Ralph Lauren today like why are they picking that like they're using what you created as the creator of the fashion brand as a way to express their own identity because not everyone has it in them to like make their own total like sure. fashion like who's making their own clothes right but that we use the brands around us and the content around us as a way to convey parts of who we are so ideally every day you could like cr- write a poem to your dad or whatever but like short of that like that's a lot of work can you like send him something that's like pre-made by someone else that still conveys like, you know, 80% of what you would do if you made it yourself originally. Like, can you, can you convey your identity by using the content that's around you? And then as content creators, it's like, how do we provide people with those fundamental uh, building blocks to let them express good things about themselves to the people that they care about. I also think it shows the person that you're like thinking about them. Like it shows my dad, I care about him. I care about his health. It's, that's why it's, I send him videos of people crashing on dirt You bikes. and my dad's DMs are literally the weirdest shit I've ever seen. You screenshotted me something from my dad the other day that I... It, These are things you that You guys are sending each other like... Uh, what is that? <laughs> I don't even know how to this describe. This is not appropriate. <laughs> This this is not appropriate. The D, the D, let's put it this way. The DM <laughs> meme that my dad sent to Michael is so inappropriate. It is Brad, Brad, the it fact is, that I'm married to... to I mean, what, what Brad, do you say? Brad's your dad's name. Brad, yeah, um, the beautiful. DM you sent me the other day, let's just put it this About way. About eating pussy. <laughs> it was, oh God. It was, have you ever seen Ace Ventura 2? 
The, the, the pet no. detective or when Why nature calls? Why is my dad nature, sending my nature, husband DMs about calls, eating pussy? It is a, it is a, do you remember when Ace Ventura comes out of the rhino, the yeah. mechanical rhino in his face, what it looks yeah. like? It was a meme of something like what she sees when yeah. I'm down. And it was like, I'm like, I cannot believe my father-in-law is sending me this. <laughs> Sorry, immediately. I don't think I my like, dad gets it. I was like, this is so fucking funny. I was like, I have to text my wife what her dad is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Brad. Talk that's, to me. I'm going to pull that clip and send it to my dad. <laughs> Talk to me about what it was like pitching Jake Paul and Kurt of Vital Proteins. I want to know how you pitched them and how you got the deal done. Because those are some people that you might be intimidated to pitch. You got to just talk to people like they're regular everyday people. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned, like just meeting interesting stars or people who are at the top of their game is like, everyone's just a person. And I don't think people really like having too much smoke blown up their ass. I think that people want to just be talked to like a person. And like, if you're excited about what you're excited about, then yeah, just like meet people where they're at. I, I try to just get to conversations as like soon as possible. Try not to like fangirl too hard. Try not to stand too hard. Just like talk to people about what's real. Um, it, with the, with Jake Paul, so my co-founder Jeff Wu met Jake. They met in Miami. Jake was getting into boxing at the time, and a lot of elite athletes had been using our product. So Conor McGregor had been using it. His trainer was big into ketones for increased stamina, better energy, all that in the gym. And then my co-founder showed Jake was like, "Yeah, look, legit. Like Conor follows me, and like using ketone on IQ for." for training. And then Jake was, oh, that's interesting. Let me start trying it. For us, we have the advantage too of it's like a real product. Like people can kind of try it around. Um, you like hand someone a sample in your pocket and then oh, Jake got into it and then got, um, it, it just kind of rolled from there organically. And then uh, my co-founder Jeff and Jake, they started something called Anti-Fund, which is uh, they do consumer investing and a bunch of interesting different stuff. So um, it just was natural from there to like cut in a, a check and I don't know. It's kind of like you can't force things either. When, like when, it, when people, the fit makes when, sense, it makes sense. When he's investing and you're you're getting these high profile investors, are they seamlessly integrating this into their content? Like, is he drinking this on his stories or is it not like that? Is he primarily an investor and that's it? With Jake, it's mainly an investor. Like there's levels. Like when someone's like as big of a star as Jake, there's definitely levels to the game there for sure because like there's just a lot of surface area when you're that level like mega sled there's like i don't know you're boxing there's a logo on the in the center of the ring there's you're just on five podcasts every single day what's in there so like there's a lot of brands kind of around him and so there's definitely levels to it there's a difference between like cutting a check into a, a business that you're like you know into or you like the team there versus like you're you're, you're like title sponsor for your next big fight. So like, yeah, there's levels to it. For He's sure. a businessman, huh? He's, oh, yeah. I think that's so He's, cool. He's very multifaceted. Oh yeah. Dude, anytime the Paul people, brothers are super smart. I would just say at this point, anytime people hate on those guys and listen, they know how to play. Like they know how to, they know how to gra grab attention, which is what I would say. But like anybody that's hating on those guys, like th what they have done is remarkable. Like they, you know, one of them's in the WWE. He's got an amazing, you know, beverage line. And one of them is b boxing. Like, People can say what they want about the boxing, but he uh, actually knows how to box and actually knows how to fight. And he's knocking out some serious people. Like all of this stuff is not like, hey, it doesn't just fall in your lap. Like you, you, you can't not be intelligent and on your game to get to the level they've gotten. He's to. on ketones. They're on ketones. That's hey, he's on the, the ketones. Yeah. You do the ketones. I, they're mad smart. They're living the American dream. They're two brothers from Ohio that made YouTube videos in their basement until they just got really big and famous. Like I. You can hate them or whatever, like, cool. Like, I, they don't need to be your favorite creator that you like all their posts or whatever, but I think you got to respect the game. Like, they are doing what I think a lot of people are trying to do or wish they could do. And yeah, you might not have their exact same affect or sense of humor or whatever, but like, you know, they took what they were passionate about and made a full, like, living lifestyle. They're creating a lot of jobs for a lot of people around them. Like, they're doing their things. I, I think it's all love. What I, what I like, not to go on a tangent with them, but what I respect about both of them is breaking it like t take all the digital content aside which is hard in itself but like you could tell both of them are passionate about the things they're doing now or like you know it's not easy to break into the wwe and get to be one of the you know biggest grossing names in that sport and it's not easy to just all of a sudden say i'm going to go into pro boxing and start having huge you know pay-per-views like these are these are like these are lanes that are have been traditionally a ton of gatekeepers in the way, and now these two guys have gotten it. And like that, it's just that has to be respected in itself.
Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Before you go, you're the perfect person to ask this. What are some other things that you do in your life to biohack your mornings and your night? Okay. What are some things that we need to start paying attention to that are these ketone mouth taping weird things that you're doing? Oh, there are some weird ones. Okay, I'm really into barefoot, like spending as much time barefoot as possible. Love it. Uh, your feet are incredible machines. You have 20,000 nerve endings in your feet. Your feet are just like your hands. And there's all sorts of sensory deprivation that takes place if you're just inside of a shoe all day. Like you're supposed to interact with the world around you. I do a lot of running barefoot because it just makes me a better runner. It forces you to do things like take quicker steps, foot hits the ground the right way. Like a, a shoe with all the chunkiness and rubber and all that, it can really mute your foot's ability to read the ground around you. And so then that leads to your foot hitting the ground the wrong way. And then your knees hurt and your shins hurt. And you're th the more I started barefoot running, the less like all my pain went away. And it's totally counterintuitive because I want you go from having like two inches of rubber between you and the cement to like, it's you. And I'll wear like, um, like Vivos or, or Vibrams, like the kind of super minimal shoes. Um, and you run in those, you're just like on the freaking, I can feel every pebble on the ground and all my pain went away. You should check out our friend Mark Sisson's um, yeah, brand. Paluva. Yeah, yeah, I love, okay. yeah, Mark's homie. That's a yeah, TikTok clip. People are going to want to know about what you just said. And you know, my husband, I would really love for him to not be muted in his shoes in my house maybe yeah. you can start walking barefoot before you get in the house instead of walking half in and dragging all the, 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 the fucking texas shit kickers on right now it's probably not the best yeah he walks a lot of in stuff. with his like heavy boots i'm like out what so, else do you do what else are other biohacky michael things okay we, we love barefoot we love uh magnesium i for sleep is just fantastic especially if you exercise a lot just you're pretty depleted on electrolytes in general and magnesium in particular. I just think like night and day for sleep score. I don't sell any magnesium or what anything. What are your brands that you go to? There's one called like triple magnesium that I like a lot. Yeah, it's like- Is several, it a powder or a pill? It's a powder. I've been looking for a good pill because like the powder is kind of like when I flew he here, Momentus I- Momentus has a good magnesium has a good, three and eight, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, well, I'll check that out. I like Momentus. I have some other Momentus. They have a good sleep my, pack too that has the magnesium in it. Cool, okay. Big into mouth tape, like even you know, prior to this. Wait, you mouth tape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I got to give you some skinny I would love to try it. Mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's huge. I got my wife into it. We just, we're big, we're just nose breathers feel really, really good. <laughs> Good sleep score. You know, the good. wild thing is, is like I, 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 got, I take it on runs sometimes too. I see a lot of runners now working to do more nose breathing. And I imagine because that is probably like the more efficient way to breathe. Why right? do yeah. you like yeah. nose breathing? Let's hear it from you. Okay. So, uh, well, this also ties into one of my other hacks of just like, sometimes I exercise where I try to exercise. I'll try to run as fast as possible while keeping my heart rate low. I'll try to see how fast I can go while keeping my heart rate up under 140. And so I'll wear a heart rate monitor and I'm a big marathon runner. So that, that for me is like part of my training. It just makes you more efficient. Like if I can run a, a seven minute mile while keeping my heart rate low, that means that when, when I really, really try, I can go really fast. What's the fastest you've ever done a marathon? Two hours, 40 minutes. Holy shit. What is that? A six, like averaging a little bit more than six? Or yeah, it's is like six oh something. I'm trying to get under six. Like that's, I'm cracking. Uh, but I don't think people understand how hard that is. Go on the treadmill, put it at 10. And do that for 26 miles. That's that's what I do for fun. That is gnarly. I mean, that is an accomplishment in, in itself. Um, Kay, do, you, do you follow Casey Neistat at all? Yeah, yeah. Did you see that video he just came out with? Yeah, he just broke three hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, just like, I mean, it took him, I mean, for, it's what he did is an accomplishment in itself. But what you're talking, I mean, you are on the, I didn't realize, like, that is intense. It, it's it, my happy place. I, I really this. like running. That's yeah. basically like going outside right now. Try running first a six minute mile. Now try doing it 26 times. Yeah. In a row. Yeah, point two. Okay, so why so why do you like nose breathing? Okay, I like I like nose breathing. You breathe it forces you to breathe more from your diaphragm. You have to take these like deeper belly breaths. It forces you to breathe more slowly. You just feel yourself more relaxed. Parasympathetic activation as a result. So you're just more like you're when you're when you're breathing like mouth open, you're almost hyperventilating. You're in this like sympathetic fight or flight mode. When you're nose breathing, you're in this parasympathetic rest and recover mode. So you're just way more chilled out like vibrating at a at a better frequency um there's some chemicals too like you get more um i forget what it is your body makes more uh i want to say nitrous oxide when you're breathing through your nose um and generally you just feel more more calm and better in control i am going to give you some like, yeah. pink lip mouth tape and i want to see you in your okay. 
one minute marathon like <laughs> you run the fastest marathon ever wearing your mouth tape i would love to the one i have is like it's like black i don't know it's not pink it's not it's, it's not, pink. not interesting you and your wife need to be wearing pink yeah 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 <laughs> if you were going to start with this if you're if people are going to start with ketone iq or hvmn if they're mm-hmm. going to start using it maybe give me three buckets of like the of a profile so for yeah. me i mostly am interested because i'm really trying to like up my my workout game right now and cool. so i'm taking it prior to my workouts and going and training in a more focused, harder way. But if you were going to say, okay, there's three kind of ideal profiles to start using this. Yeah. What would, how would okay. you tell people to start? Yeah. I'll give it to you right now. So the one, okay. I want to just work out harder. I want to be more focused, more dialed in, in the gym. That's bullseye for sure. The next is I want to be, I want to have less cravings, more appetite control. I want to be able to just like work and do stuff and not be hungry all the time. Really solid there. Uh, I want to be doing, you know, intermittent fasting. I want to be able to keep a longer intermittent fasting window, all that like kind of appetite control. Um, And then the third one is just getting in the zone at work. Like mentally, I want to be able to just sit and focus and think and like have my, I don't want to be tired. If it's two, three in the afternoon, I don't want coffee. I want to just have something that's going to get me in the zone into flow state. That's what I say. This is great for podcasting too. I'm going to start doing these more in podcasts. We have a bunch of podcasts coming up. These are these are solid to take. Yeah. Someone told me it's like low dose Adderall the way they make it feel. I always talk about it as like, it kind of feels like runner's high in a bottle. So yeah, people like it. Yeah, for just, It does feel great. I like it. Yeah. I'm going to definitely take one every single day. I personally am going to do it before I weight lift. Cool. We have a discount for 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ. Go to hvmn.com slash skinny and you will save 30%. Buy some for your significant other or your friends too, because they're going to try to steal them. Michael has so generously said that he is going to give away a month supply to five winners. All you have to do is follow on Instagram at HVMN and tell us your favorite takeaway of this podcast on my latest post at Lauren Bostic. Michael, thank you for coming on. Thanks for the shot of energy and the appetite control. I actually don't feel hungry. No, I feel great. I'm in ketosis right now. Yeah, I'm in ketosis. Thank Thank you, Michael. Michael. This is a lot of fun. Thanks so much.